Hello there, friends, and welcome to this week's episode of Money on Your Mind. I love questions when it comes to understanding how individuals can give back, how they can be more charitably inclined. And this specific question is, when is it appropriate to think about starting a donor-advised fund? If you don't know what a donor-advised fund is, I'll just give you a little bit of a, uh, a quick synopsis. Essentially, it's you being able to make a lump sum type of donation into a long-term vehicle that allows the money to stay invested in you to be able to make distributions, almost like a smaller version of a foundation into nonprofits. So you get to choose the nonprofits, you get to choose when, and the money stays invested. Downside of that is it's outside of your portfolio. You can't access it for anything else. So a lot of times I'll have this question given to me at the end of the year when we start to think about charitably inclined donations. Now, that being said, I think this is something that you should be thinking about throughout the year, not just at the end of the year. A donor advised fund is a great vehicle to use for appreciated stock that we might not need to use for our own lifestyle and have designated a certain amount of money that we want to be able to charitably give. That being said, smaller dollar amounts utilizing a donor advised fund under the standard deduction is usually not the best use of what a donor advised fund is used for. And if you're not planning on doing this more often or over, you know, a you know, maybe you do it one year and then you skip a year. That's really the tax benefit of being able to put all the money in. You also want to make sure that you're having this conversation with your financial advisor and your tax professional. So you understand what is it that's going to make this, you know, contribution into the DAF tax deductible for you? How is it going to operate in your tax picture as a whole? That being said, if you're putting this lump sum into it, maybe every other year, every three years, that's something that's beneficial. If you're just thinking about it as a one pop, chances are it's not necessarily something that you want to consider. Donor advised funds are for individuals who are truly looking to make a long-term impact in a charitable way. There are so many different other elements that you can think of starting your own foundation, you know, having charitable remainder trusts, all of these other things that become very complex in a, as a part of planning. Donor advised funds are kind of that introductory space that we start to consider when it comes to charitably inclined planning. That being said, it's somebody that's going to be wanting to do this for a long period of time. And we're thinking about it, for instance, a standard deduction for married filing jointly in the year 2021 was 24,500. Every year it goes up a little bit. That being said, that is going to be you're going to want your donations to be above and beyond that. And that's where your tax professional and your financial advisor working together makes sense. But for a lot of individuals who might have appreciated stock, potentially from their employer or from their an inheritance that they might have received and had held on to for a period of time, or somebody who just followed that good old Warren Buffett, you know, buy and hold mentality, this might be a great element for you to be able to utilize. Other individuals who are thinking about doing it are individuals who are maybe trying to, you know, spread out part of their estate so it isn't as large and being able to repurpose into an element that allows them to be charitably inclined now and then have their family have something that they can carry on into the future. Again, these are complex financial planning topics that you do want to make sure that you loop in your professionals. Donor advised funds also have fees associated with them. And so you want to make sure that you're looking into the elements and outweighing, you know, giving directly to a charity versus paying a fee. If you have a long-term strategy and things that you're going to do over a test of time or stocks that you're not going to use that have, you know, lots of capital gains in them, this might be something you want to consider. If you're varying in your charitable donations every year and you're hovering somewhere around that standard deduction, you probably just maybe want to consider donating directly to that charity. When you are donating direct, and even though you're donating from a donor advised fund, you're still donating direct, there might be a lot more control over the time frame in which you give assets to. 
So by looping in not only your financial advisor, tax professional, but also the organizations that you want to donate to, these are great people to sit around the table and have a conversation about how your portfolio, your wealth can make an impact in so many different ways. But understanding how all of those play a part is not a bad thing. Understanding how your charitable contributions can be beneficial to you from a tax perspective does not make you a bad person. It makes you a strategic person. So please make sure that you're involving your entire team when it comes to making those conversations happen. Donor advised funds, again, understanding the long-term haul. This isn't something that you just want to do one and done. You want to make sure that you're understanding how that plays out over time, involving your tax professional, your financial advisor, and any of those individuals from the 501c3s, colleges, education systems that you are wanting to give to. If you have a question that you would like to submit for our Money on Our Mind segment, simply go to forethoughtplanning.com, resources, then money on your mind, and submit your question there. We would love to hear from you. And always remember, you are worthy of wealth.